Hello, you beautiful people. Today we are here with another episode of Keep, Trade, or Drop. So this is going to be the second installment. Um, today we're going to go ahead and just get to go through some players that have been asked a lot of questions about, whether in the Discord or in the comments section. People just generally want to know what to do with them. So first off, we'll start with some players that are sort of like not waiver wire players. So I'm going to give you my opinion on whether I think you should trade them or whether you should keep them on your fantasy team. Then we're going to go ahead and get into more waiver wire guys and tell you if you should hold on to them or if you should drop them and pick up someone else. But yeah, as always, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers on the channel, so if you could help us do that, really appreciate it. And as always, join the Discord, the link in the description if you want to talk about anything fantasy basketball related, have any trade questions, waiver wire questions, anything literally NBA related. It's a great place to do that, so link for that in the description, like I said. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it. All right, so first up, we got Holy Mount Zion, Zion Williamson. Um, I don't know, there's a recent... Oh, oh shit, my bad boys, wrong picture. Let me, let me, let me skip this one. So that was a low blow, but we'll just start off with Zion. He's going to be the first player on my list, and he is someone that I am generally very concerned about. Like, the reports are not believed to be very good. There's a more, The most recent one was from Brian Windhorst, who said he's believed to be several weeks away from returning to game action. And that's just really shitty, because a lot of people took Zion very early in the draft. If you had your draft, like, before the serious supports reports started coming out, you probably took him in the second round or third round. And yeah, it's just looking like Zion's in one of those situations where he's too good to drop. You can't really leave him on any waiver wires, even if you're in like an eight-team league. Because someone's just going to instantly stash him up in an IR spot. So hopefully you have an IR spot for Zion. I know it's shitty, but you really can't like you can't really trade him because you're not going to get anything in return unless you're okay with just giving up his upside for like some mediocre players that aren't really worth his value. But I mean, we don't even know when he's going to be back on the floor, so I wouldn't be too mad if you sort of gave up on him and we're in that situation but if i had zion williamson on my personal fantasy team i would be holding him if i only had one ir spot i'm he's just gonna have to fill it and if another person gets hurt i'm just gonna have to deal with that maybe take a few losses this week but as long as we can qualify for the playoffs at the end of the year it's all that really matters so unfortunately zion williamson is a hold i'm sorry if he's on your team i, I know it must be pretty painful i was really high on him going into the season as well so it really sucks to see this injury situation but what can you do? So yeah, Zion Williamson, I'm going to say he's a hold for now. I don't think anyone's going to give you a good trade for him. If you don't have Zion on your team, I don't even think it's worth trading for him because I generally try to avoid trading for guys that are injured and don't really have like a solid timetable for return. So yeah, Zion Williamson, hold if he's on your team. Don't trade for him if he's not. And yeah, next up is going to be Tyrese Maxey. He's like the biggest sell high player in the game right now. I don't care what people say. They're like, oh no, he's going to keep this up. Like, Joel Embiid's out, Tobias Harris was out for most of those games. When Embiid gets back into the lineup, Maxi is not going to keep up this production, all right? Maybe he'll maybe he'll prove me wrong, but I think there's no chance in hell that Maxi's going to be scoring like 30 points per game when Embiid's in the lineup. I just don't see that happening. It doesn't seem realistic. There's just not that many opportunities for him. See, so yeah, I think when the Sixers are back to full health, I still think he'll be a decent option. Like I don't think he belongs on any waiver wires. I think he's definitely must roster, but I think he's a huge sell high player. If I had Maxi on my team, I would definitely be trading him right now, sort of targeting some better level guys that will have better production for the entirety of the year. And then there's the Ben Simmons thing. I don't even I don't even know, man. Nobody knows when he's gonna play. People are asking like when's Ben Simmons gonna be back? Nobody knows, man. Don't listen to anybody other like unless there's a report from the Sixers organization or some shit. It's really just nobody knows. It's just a mystery. Who knows with him? So yeah, even I don't think that's going to affect Tyrese at all. I just feel like it's worth mentioning in case someone's questioning about whether Ben Simmons is going to affect Tyrese Maxey. Nobody fucking knows, all right? So yeah, Tyrese Maxey is going to be the second player on the list. I think he's like probably the biggest sell-high player in the game right now. He's playing unreal for the Sixers. He's killing everybody. If you, if you were going against him this week, my prayers are with you because I'm also experiencing that, and it is a pain in the ass. But yeah, I would definitely go ahead and try to trade Tyrese Maxey. If you can't get a, anything... For him, if people in your league are more aware and they're not falling for the sell high bid, then you might as well just hold them. Just don't expect him to be averaging like the 40 points per game or whatever, something stupid he's averaging the past seven days or whatever. So, yeah, that's going to do it for Maxi. Next up is DeMontis Sabonis, and he is someone that I personally have. I've everybody knows if you're not if you're new to the channel, I'm very high on DeMontis Sabonis every single year. I have him ranked inside my top 10, and I don't really have reason to stray away from that. I mean. Yeah, the Pacers do look a little bit crowded, some people have said. But DeMontis Sabonis has been one of the most consistent performers for fantasy the past two seasons. And I really think, like, the hit is in his recent production in, like, the last four games. I mean, it's not even the last four games. Like, he had a really good game against Denver. It was just, like, four out of the last five. His numbers have been a little bit subpar. And I think that's the Rick Carlisle effect. He's sort of transitioning the Pacers into, like, a more perimeter-oriented scoring team because he just hates post-ups for some reason. And I think it's definitely taken away from Sabonis' numbers. I mean, they're kind of using him a little bit like a role man that isn't 
like have doesn't have any real, real skill with like passing the ball or going off the dribble or anything which Sabonis kind of can if he gets ahead of steam to the rim he can make good passing decisions he can post up like I really feel like they're not using him to his best of his abilities those like four games that he was like performing subpar and it's not even like they were winning those games like it's not like this strategy was working so I feel like that'll probably turn itself around and it's sort of going under the assumption that if you think it's too crowded that oh I gotta trade Sabonis because like Levert, Warren, Brogdon like we don't know when the Pacers are all going to be healthy it's they have not been able to all be healthy at once in so long so like while it might be the case I still think Sabonis is the number one guy on this team I think these are just sort of a blip on the radar and I'm not willing to panic trade one of the highest most consistent players on fantasy just because of like four bad games so if Demontis Sabonis is on my team maybe I'm a little bit concerned but I'm definitely nowhere near the amount of concern where I'm going to trade him so I have Sabonis in like pretty much every league I join I make sure I draft him as early as I can and yeah I'm going to go ahead and hold him I think Sabonis is a hold I don't think his value is going to drop that much I feel like this is just sort of a blip in one of the most consistent fantasy performers numbers and I would expect it to take a bit increase maybe I'll be wrong and I'll readdress this later in the season if the Pacers get fully healthy and Sabonis is sort of relegated to a lesser role and he's not putting up any good fantasy numbers but for now I think I'm going to hold Sabonis and I think you should too I don't think it's worth trading him away because people are going to try to undersell the oh the Pacers are crowded like give him to me he's not getting a lot of shot attempts we all know there's that guy in your league that's going to try to convince you of that so if you have Sabonis just hold strong I think he probably will pick it up I, maybe we'll give him two weeks and then if it's still sort of continuing in this trend maybe we'll reevaluate but for now I think Sabonis is a must keep and I would not trade him away all right so moving on we got someone else who I talked about in my last keep trader drop video but in the discord he was one of the most requested players for me to talk about so I am nothing if not a man of the people so first is gonna be Jonas Valanciunas and I think the big concern with Jonas is just the return of Zion Williamson I mean when Zion comes back I think Jonas's rebounding numbers probably take a little bit of a hit don't know if he's gonna average the 14 rebounds per game that he is averaging the 20 points that seems a bit far-fetched, but he'll probably be around 18, 18 or 19. I don't think it's going to take a huge drop. So yeah, the thing is, though, like I've talked about with Zion previously, we don't even know when he's going to be back. It says multiple weeks, like at the very worst. So for the time being, there's nothing wrong with holding Jonas. If you're worried that Zion's going to like massively affect his production and Jonas isn't going to be doing anything, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Like It's not really worth dropping Jonas, or not dropping, sorry, trading Jonas away. I think the only reason you should trade Jonas is... If it sort of gets closer to like when Zion's returning and you're still worried about you know, like Zion cutting into production, then I'm okay with the Jonas trade. But for now, I have Jonas on my team. I'm, I'm sending out offers, you know, but I'm not sending out like low ball offers. I'm trying to go after like top 15, top 10 fantasy guys because Jonas is like the number two ranked center right now, averaging 42 points per game for fantasy in like default leagues. So definitely don't undersell Jonas. Don't let someone tell you, be like, oh, Zion's going to hurt his production because we don't even know when Zion's going to be back. Like we could easily get another month or two out of Jonas Valanciunas at this level so even though like Zion might come back in like January let's say you're still getting two months of Jonas Valanciunas with no Zion and then you're getting the rest of the season with Zion which I think Jonas will still put up some decent numbers so if I have Jonas Valanciunas I'm not worried about the Zion news I'm going to hold on to him but like I said if it starts to get near if we get more concrete reports on Zion's return time and you're worried that he's going to cut his production Go ahead and try to sell high, but if you can't get a sell high trade-off, like I said, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm okay with holding Jonas. So that's going to do it. I hope that was clear. I'll just reiterate, Jonas Valanciunas, hold for now, and then if Zion news comes out that gets closer, try to sell high, but if you can't, nothing wrong with holding on to Jonas. Just don't expect like the 2020 games to be happening all that frequently. Anyway, that was a long-winded explanation, but next up is Michael Porter Jr. He's another guy, man. It's just... It's a pain. It's a pain in the ass. I was very high on Michael Porter Jr. I mentioned him in the last video. There's really murky reports on when he's going to be returning. Like, nobody really knows for sure. They said foreseeable future, and now they're saying, like, sort of game by game they're saying he's going out. So we're going to have to really need an update on him before I can make any concrete decisions on what to do with him. I think for now, obviously, he's a hold. It's a shame. I hope you have an IR spot for him, but you really cannot be trading him because you're not going to get anything in return. And if you don't have him on your team, again, don't trade for him. Don't trade for guys that have mystery injuries that have no idea where they're going to be at. And if we look at ESPN, he has been dropped in 9% of league. Like his roster percentage is down 9%, which I feel like that's a little bit high. And I think it's to do with like his slow start to the season as well. People have sort of given up on him. I'm still holding out hope that Michael Porter Jr. could bounce back, but it all depends on the next injury report. So he's someone that I'd be constantly checking the injury report if he's on my fantasy team. 
or if I'm like targeting a trade for him because it could be a really good way to squeeze some value out because I think you could get him for dirt cheap right now. And if you can get him for like a waiver wire guy that you just picked up, I think that's by all means go ahead and do it. Like it's not like you're giving up much for like what you could get in return. But yeah, that's going to do it for Michael Porter Jr. He is a hold if he's on your team. He is not like don't drop him. It's not worth the drop until there's at least there's a concrete report. And then at that point, fine, go ahead. And yeah, if you want to trade for him, I wouldn't give up more than a waiver guy because it's not worth trading for someone who has such a devastating, like, not devastating, but like such a murky injury that we don't know too much about. So yeah, that's going to do it for all my trade or keep guys. And now we're going to go ahead and get into the guys that I'm going to discuss whether you should drop them or whether you should hold them on your fantasy team. All right, so we're going to move on to the keeper drop or like the holder drop, whatever you want to call it. First up, Bojan Bogdanovic. Man, he has been so crap from the field this year. He has not been performing well for fantasy. Unfortunately, I think he does have the upside where I would consider him a must roster in like 10 teams and up. If you're in an eight team, maybe I would consider dropping if you had someone better on the waiver wire, which I will have a waiver wire video coming out later this week. So I'll give you some potential options. If you wanted to drop him, I'll sort of talk about that. But for right now, I do think he is must roster. I know he's been underperforming, but I think his scoring upside is too high to be left on a waiver wire. because He is capable of having like 20 point games pretty consistently or getting close to it on the Jazz. So, Bojan, to start off, people are concerned about him. They're wondering if they should drop him. 10 team and up, I think he is must roster. 8 team, I would probably keep him. I say that hesitantly because it is really dependent on who's on the waiver wire. So, yeah, 8 team, I guess consider it anything above. I think he is must roster, and I wouldn't consider dropping him. As shitty as he may be playing. Next up, we've got some rookies in quick succession. First up, Chris Duarte from the Pacers. Started off the season really hot from the field. I think he's number like three or four on the rookie of the year ladder but I think it was sort of destined that he wouldn't be able to sustain that sort of production that he was putting up at the start of the season just mainly because of the Pacers like their lineups getting back healthy again and I feel like when Levert and Brogdon and maybe when eventually Warren comes back eventually like when they're all playing together I don't think Duarte is even going to be rosterable in like 12 or 14 team leagues but we don't know when that point's going to come around for now I think in eight to ten team leagues 8-team, I'm definitely dropping him. 10-team, probably going to be a drop. And then 12 and up, I think he is a keep for now. And just sort of depends on how the Pacers' health like as a whole sort of pans out. But yeah, 8-10-team, to 10 team, I think I'm going to drop Chris Duarte for now. Who knows, maybe he'll pick it back up if there are the injuries reoccur. But the shot attempts just aren't there for him. If you're going to be a three-point shooter and you're not going to get a lot of attempts, you're not really a rosterable guy unless you're shooting like something ridiculous from the field on a hot stretch. So... That's going to do it for Duarte. Unfortunately, I think he's a drop for most of you unless you're in like a 12-team plus league. I don't really know the percentage of people in like 8 to 10 team leagues versus 12 and plus, but whatever. And next up, we got Jalen Suggs. Someone that people, some people were very high on him going into the draft. I really wasn't. I didn't have him ranked anywhere close to my top 70. Even I thought he was ranked way too high on ESPN. And I, I didn't think out of the Orlando backcourt, I did think Suggs was going to outperform Anthony, but if anything... That couldn't have been more wrong because Anthony. it seems like Anthony's stellar performances have been making Suggs' numbers even worse than they already were. So yeah, in 8-10 to 10 team leagues, I'm dropping Suggs. 12-team, I'm probably going to drop him as well. Anything past that, iffy. And I think people are... This is a, a thing I've noticed this year is people are sort of taken for granted that they're like, oh, well, he's a rookie. Like, he's going to bounce back. There's no, like, necessity in, like, that a rookie's going to bounce back. Sometimes rookies just have bad seasons and then they'll bounce back in their sophomore year or something like that. But... I'm not saying Suggs is a bad player, but right now he's not really ad adjusting well. He's not His game's not adjusting well to the NBA level. And people are just like, well, that happened to Anthony Edwards. Like, There can be one-off exceptions. It's not like every rookie that's a top pick just plays well in their rookie year at some point. Like, They can have shit seasons. People just think like LaMelo Ball and Anthony Edwards got their recency bias thing. And like, oh, rookies always perform. That's not the case. So yeah, if Cole Anthony keeps this up, there's really nothing that Jalen Suggs is going to be able to do. And then I don't know when Markel Fultz is coming back. I don't think they have a concrete timetable on that. But if he does come back this season, we'll just go ahead and check that right now. Fultz, no recent news on him. Yeah, no idea when he's coming back. But if he eventually does, that probably hurts Suggs even more. So for now, yeah, I'm probably dropping Suggs in 8, 10, and 12. 12 is a maybe, but 8 and 10, I'm definitely dropping him. And then 14, I mean, you got to keep him because there's really just the waivers are bare in 14 team plus leagues. So yeah, he's been really disappointing. I mean, he is a rookie, though. He could turn it around. I could be proven wrong on these rookies. I just generally, I feel like people right now, especially, are just thinking, like, rookie equals going to be good at some point in their rookie season, which is not the case at all. There's plenty of, like, very prominent examples of rookies that have really bad seasons and then 
they bounce back in like their second or third years, but it just it doesn't mean that they're going to be a good rookie, if you get what I mean, for fantasy purposes anyway. And that same sentiment pretty much exactly carries over to Jalen Green. He's just been shooting like doo-doo from the field, bro. He's been so bad. He doesn't really have any assist numbers. The, the block's non-existent. The steals aren't really there. Averaging less than one a game for both of them. Averaging like 2.8 assists. Nothing for rebounds and inefficiently shooting the ball from the field. And not to mention he is a turnover machine. Turnovers, he's averaging like four a game. Or sorry, three a game. So yeah, put that all together. Not a good fantasy player. Jalen Green, I'm I'm more comfortable dropping him than a lot of people are because he was the number two pick. But it's just like, boys, I'm, there's no guarantee Jalen like Jalen Green can score the ball, all right? Like, but he, he's going to have games where he goes off. But it's not going to be every night. He's averaging 18.5 fantasy points per game right now, which is terrible. There's not, not no other way to round it. Eight to ten, eight to ten team leagues, absolutely. I'm uncomfortable dropping Jalen Green. Twelve team, me personally, I would drop him. I know some people don't want to do that, and that might be a bit of a controversial take. Some people will be like, "You don't know what you're talking about. He's a rookie. He's going to be good after Christmas." Like, okay, maybe he will be. I am of the opinion right now that until he like sort of gets some more size on him, gets more comfortable driving to the rim and finishing there. I don't think his fantasy numbers are going to pick up that much. And even when he does, it's not like he contributes anything in peripheral stats. And I don't think he's going to be an efficient scorer this year. So I'm very low on Jalen Green for fantasy. Do I think he's a good player with a lot of potential? Absolutely. But for fantasy this season, I'm really not that confident in him. I'm okay with dropping him in a lot of leagues. And then 14 team and up, I think, unfortunately, you do have to keep Jalen Green. Just because, like I mentioned earlier, nobody's really on the waivers. And you sort of need guys that have upside. It's just be like that sometimes. And then the last player I want to talk about, Duncan Robinson. This is more for the deeper leagues. He's just been shooting like garbage. He's on fire right now against Utah is the time I'm recording this, of course. But overall, I think he's worth a stream here and there, especially with Jimmy out. There's a lot more opportunities for everybody on the Heat, honestly. But yeah, overall, I think 8, 10, and 12, probably not rosterable, belongs on the waivers. Anything past that, of course, I think I am keeping him 14 team. Could you even maybe get away with a trade with Duncan Robinson if he performs well while Jimmy continues to miss a little bit of time for his ankle? Maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone in your league is intemp- like enticed by the three-point shooting. But generally, would uh, avoid Duncan Robinson in 12-team and below leagues, and then 12-team and, and then 14-team to however many the maximum is. I think he is probably, I'm not going to say he's must roster by any means, but he's probably going, probably belongs on a roster. I wouldn't be... I would be kind of surprised if he was on the waivers in a 14-team league, to put it that way, just because Jimmy is out, and sort of like, as soon as a guy gets on a little streak, you just pick him up instantly. So that's going to do it sort of all over the place in my explanations today, but I hope this helped you guys out. If you want specific players for me to talk about in the next Keep Trade or Drop, then make sure you join the Discord and put them in there. we got a Keep Trade or Drop channel. That's where I got some of these suggestions from. Really appreciate you guys for suggesting any of these players. Thank you guys very much for watching, and as always, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day.